Well, I don't know about you boys, but I'm absolutely shattered after that Easter period. I don't know how I'm going to cope this coming weekend. Hi guys, my name is Dave Parkinson. This is, of course, Look Rugby League Weekly in association with our sponsors, Betfred. Delighted to be joined by the Laurel and Hardy of Rugby League Chit Chat. We've got uh, Drew Derbyshire, pleasure. got James Messenger. Pleasure to be here, Dave. Um... Yeah, it's been a long, long weekend, hasn't it? Over the Easter period, God knows uh, how the players feel. I know, I feel tired just watching it, so... You can only imagine the people who've done two games in 48, 72 hours. It's crazy. Right, we'd love your involvement over the course of the show, so remember to share, like, comment, want as much as possible. Drew's going to now get his... Get his phone. The calculator. <laughs> the calculator, just in case we need to add anything up. Um, we've got a, a new feature coming up. Now, have we? We have, we have. I mean, it's off the top of my head because the topics, I've got to watch that, I don't want to put the ball <laughs> over there because I've positioned it quite skillfully. Uh, the topics are all included in a lovely, a lovely rugby league beanie. Very nice. <laughs> um, you can't buy more, we've run out of stock. <laughs> so it's just so unfortunate. So we will be dipping in there for our topics over the course of the show. Uh, but first of all, Drew, and James, tell us what's new on site. Go on, James, you reel off your plug. Uh, well, we've got, obviously, had a couple of team of the weeks over the weekend. We try and do one for, for every round, so the players who perform well always deserve some good recognition there in there. So who's made it? So in the our Good Friday one? In the Good Friday one, oh, it's a long time ago now. There have been a lot, of, uh, a lot of St. Helens players in over the course of the entire weekend, which is... Well, they've been phenomenal, haven't they? Which is understandable. They've been rightly so. They've been fantastic, picking up... Picking up wins left, right, and centre. On Friday, of course, there was quite a lot of um, of Salford, Salford guys in there after their victory over Warrington, which was unexpected, really. Exactly, not many of us saw that. And then obviously Hull FC, they had a few few of the young players who made that team. Jack Logan, I think, scored a hat trick on the wing. Connor Wynn playing playing exceptionally from fullback. So yeah, there've been a lot of teams in that one. And then fast forward to Monday, obviously a lot of St. Helens players in there. Get Blake Austin's as a lot of good performances, so yeah, go and check that out. I'm sure Drew's got some other stuff to plug. Uh, we've got all the Super League highlights from both the Good Friday games and the Easter Monday games. We've got a mailbox feature where obviously fans get the opportunity to voice their opinions on anything rugby league related. Uh, the latest one is saying add a golden try um, as well. Is as that rather than just point. drop goal the fonts? Because we yeah. do tend to have people just. So thought. it's it's very interesting. He, he offers his own opinion uh, on that as well. We've got plenty more stuff. The good, good the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, my little um, column from the Easter weekend talks about all things um, rugby league. Have your say. Should the Easter period be scrapped or kept? A lot of fans have been voicing their opinions on that as well. They've had a lot of interaction. A lot of people for it, a lot of people against it. Uh, let us know what you think. As always, we've got the paper talk, which is always a popular one, reading up the latest news from the papers. Um, we've got off the record as well, the, the big one on site, um, which has proven obviously very, very popular as well. That went live uh, Wednesday lunchtime. And the latest feature on site is the expansionist blog, what I, I had the pleasure of doing this morning on Coventry Bows. Um, they're doing good, good things uh, on and off the field uh, so far in 2019, so I recommend that you um, you check it out and, and you're reading into it. And it's a fascinating uh, piece, if I do say so myself, there. Uh, the only thing these two haven't mentioned is the latest podcast that's available I'm as well. I will leave that for you, Dave. <laughs> ah, so the final hooter, we've got new titles for it and everything. I think there's some budget being found somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know where. David Parkinson, I heard it, not Dave Parkinson. Well, you know, it's that's for the people that don't know me. <laughs> Well, it's the same guy anyway, isn't your friends it? Call, from, your friends call from, you Dave and people who, who aren't your friends call you Dave. Apart from about the shave, that's the only difference. That's the only difference, you know. So, uh, But yeah, that, that was a good. We've got plenty of reaction from the championship. We've got some reaction from Justin Oldbrook as well after uh, St. Alan's impressive victory against, uh, against Hull on Easter Monday. Um, while we're talking plugs and stuff, um, of sockets. Well, we could do. <laughs> Could do, yeah, yeah. No, we're not a B&Q podcast, Rush, yeah. Although if they want to chuck some sponsorship our way, I'll quite happily stand here with a two-by-four. <laughs> Just a quick shout out to our sponsors, Betfair. We've also got a top six favourites for the Wigan job online as well, so you can you can go and check that out. Does anybody want it? 
It's a poison chalice this week. Well, well, Adrian <laughs> Long said he, he thinks he'd, he'd like uh, the, the job permanently. He thinks. He thinks. Uh, <laughs> which, when when, which when was, was he asked feel... though? Was he asked on? No, he was. Yeah, he was, was he's been asked pre asked after Easter Monday, okay. uh, and he's he's revealed that he, he thinks he would he would like the job on a permanent basis. He'd like it to be a bit more certain. Wouldn't yeah, he? it doesn't fill the the Warriors fans with much uh, optimism. Um, but if it, it it's it's obviously. Obvious that he does want it, but he's obviously just keeping his cards close to his chest just in case yeah. Wigan don't okay. offer him the role. So what um, I want to do first of all is go through the results for Super League for both Good Friday and Easter Monday. I noticed already Alex has joined us. Thank you very much, Alex. And he's wanting us to talk about Bill Arthur getting the gig at Sky mm-hmm. uh, for the meantime. So I want to come to that as well. Yeah. Uh, but we'll, we'll just go through the results. So um, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, seems a long, long time ago now. <laughs> Uh, so Castleford 28, Wakefield 26, echoing exactly what Drew said last week about Wakefield not really rising to the occasion in so much as close games and getting over the line in close games. Then on Good Friday we saw Hull give Hull Kingston Rovers a right royal thumping, 56 points to 12. Leeds actually managed to get a decent half-time lead, mm. leading 30 points to nil against Huddersfield. They ended up completing a 38-18 victory. Uh, London were disappointing after they lost Jordan Abdul. Catalans romping to a 39-6 victory. Sam Tompkins, I believe, was the man in form in that one. Very good, yeah. Um, for me, this was the shock of the round. Warrington 12, Salford 36. What happened? What's it's happened? Cr- it's, it's crazy. I think... One thing we've seen over the whole of the Easter weekend is anyone can beat anyone. I think we were looking on Tuesday at the teams who'd actually won both their Easter games, and now it was the two or three teams. There was only yeah. St. Uh, Helens, St. Helens and Catalan. Catalan, they're the only two who won all the games, so it, it, it just shows how, how anyone can win anything. Sol- Sol- so, I, 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 I disagree, though. I don't, I don't think we'd see London beating St. Helens. Hang and fire, Kansas. hang fire. Don't go any further, because... We have good Easter, bad Easter in the hat of destiny. <laughs> have you not brought us some eggs, Dave? Easter eggs? I couldn't hatch any this morning. Oh, oh Easter, Easter, Easter eggs. Sorry. It's <laughs> no. a rugby league dinosaur, Dave, isn't it? They're all come. They're all come. They're all come. <laughs> uh, the other game that I did mention, Drew. Yeah. Wow. Wigan 10, St. Thomas 36. They were in it for 25 minutes, weren't they? Yeah, I'd say they were in it for... for for the entire first half, um, but but the second half, Saints came out completely raw, Wigan. Um, amazing it a, grace. <laughs> it was an amazing grace. I'm not going to start singing. It, no, no it, to, to be fair, though, a, a, a very, very classy display from St. Helens in that second half. Uh, Johnny Lomax in the halves, he, he's having a wow of a season. Regan Grace obviously getting the headlines with his, I think it's his first ever hat trick for St. Helens. Okay. Um, so a fine performance from him as well. Morgan Knowles as well. Standout performance. Let's stop you there because yeah. otherwise we're kind of crossing over. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. The hat of sorry. destiny, yeah. hat of <laughs> destiny or off the top of my head. Uh, so it's be... In fact, I've, I've got about three different names for it already, haven't I? So it's, what did you say? Off the top of my off head. Off the top of my head. There you go. So that's what that's what he's called. <laughs> right. Uh, Super League Monday. Catalans 37, Castleford 16. Surprising that they got defeated so... Well, I, I, I predicted on the, on this show last week, Dave, that Catalans would win. I just thought with with two two games in in the space of four days, I think it was going to be always going to be an uphill battle for for Cat, Castleford, especially having to to go to Perpignan on that second game on the Monday. Okay, Huddersfield twenty four, London Broncos nineteen. Perhaps no surprise there. Uh, Hull Kingston Rovers six, Warrington fifty four. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Salford for twenty six, Wigan thirty. Wigan back on the horse. Very nearly what lost it. it. <laughs> very, very nearly lost it, Dave. Um, I think Salford was. I think it was twenty six eighteen. Salford led with about seven minutes to go, and then uh, a controversial try from Joel Greenwood. There's pictures <laughs> emerging on social media after after the game. He that, did drop it. Did. But it appears that he might have uh, slipped out of his hands a little bit when he was going over the line. And then uh, none other than Zach Arneke, um going over for the game's last try. It had to be him winning the game for Wigan, didn't it? Played at centre, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Morgan Esker at fullback, Hardacre at centre. I much prefer him as a, as a fullback, though, I must say. Fair enough. Uh, St. Helens 62, Hull 16. 
all looked so rosy for Hull when they went 10 0 up early doors and then they just got rolled by St. Helens. But I suppose they're not the only team this season that's gone and uh, uh, been rampaged by St. Helens. Um, the second time they've conceded 60 points though, so that's a, maybe a little bit of a worry. Wakefield 26, Leeds Rhinos 24. Drew, Wakefield getting over the top in a close game. So they've lost a close game, they've won a close game. Hey, they've done what, what, uh, what I said last week. What Chris Chester and his, and his staff must have been watching the show last week, Dave. Um, <laughs> oh, you, yeah. can't claim, you can't claim his half time team talk or anything in preparation, surely, Drew. Why not? Do you reckon they'll put your name up in hey, why some not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Picture up as well. <laughs> <Why not>? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that, that, the, the, the picture will go up if you want to keep the kids away from the fire. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's yeah, the, oh, the, 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 mine as well. To be fair, yeah, they had to win a big game sooner or later, yes. isn't it? Um, obviously, they, they had that. Well, it, it wasn't a, a, a poor result on on the Thursday um, against Castleford, but they, they obviously still lost that game, and they they, sh- they always struggled to beat Castleford, don't they? And as we said last week, there's not many players in that Wakefield team who who have actually won against the Tigers uh, while playing for Trinity, but. A fine result on on the Monday, and it's good to to see them return to winning ways. I think they will get the top five spot this year. Well, I think that's because of the point you made before about everybody else is beating everybody else, aren't they? And exactly. To, and, and to be fair, sorry, no, sorry, sorry to both God, I was giving yeah. James a chance to have the same. <laughs> just, just remind, just remind him of who, of who predicted win the grand final this year, uh, James. Who, who it was Leeds. And if I Dave, Dave predicted oh, Leeds win the grand final this year. Bet you wish you could change that right now. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to happen. But look, you just get relegation. Say, yeah, the well, they're not going, going to make the top league. five, are they? I, to, to be fair, I, pre- I thought Leeds would make the top five. I predicted they'd, they'd finish in that top five. This um, is why you just ignore every prediction that we ever come out with. So the whole yeah. predictions bit, just going back the opposite. <laughs> that's, that's fine by me. Um, right. Let us address Alex's point now. Because he said about... Well, first of all, what's your thoughts on Eddie Emmons? Because for me... He's been that voice of rugby league for so long. Yeah. He's going to be so hard to replace, isn't he? He is. Well, I'm, I'm 22, I think. 23 this time. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your memory's not meant to be going at such an early age. You can forgive me at 40 for losing my marbles. What about you? <laughs> but so, so look, growing up watching rugby, no matter what, what age I've been, it's always just been Eddie Emmons. Obviously on the BBC, it's Dave Woods, etc., it was was Ray French, but on Sky, it's, I've I've only known Eddie Emmons. I, I've known nothing different. Uh, I, I, uh, I grew up listening to to him and Eddie, uh, him and Steve O. Bicker. Uh, I, I used to watch all the the Boots and All and the, and the Back Chat episodes. They were fantastic. It's a voice of rugby league, isn't it? Like like Ray French was for the BBC, is a voice of rugby league. Uh, it'd be a, a very sad loss. It, it'll be. It'll be um, strange not hearing the the uh, Eddie Hemmings soundboard. Uh, what what I like to say um, going forward, the the terra firma, <laughs> the whitewash. Um, so Those were Steve also. They went out a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, Eddie said Eddie. Eddie said Eddie's got his own though, hasn't he? Yeah. And his own sort of style yeah. and his own panache. He was yeah. a fantastic presenter as well, wasn't he? He was he was professional, but um, he could. Have a little bit of banter with the the likes of Barry McDermott and Terry O'Connor as well when when he needed. Yeah, but it's, it's good as well to see obviously Bill Arthur coming in. I think can't think of many better people in rugby league for the job. He's really good. He's a really good commentator, and I think he, he really knows his stuff. And I think that's it's going to be hard to hard to replace someone like Eddie Hemmings. But I think if anyone if anyone can do it, then I think it is Bill Arthur. What advice would you give to Bill? Then? Is it a case of be your own man? Yeah, that's try right. And, I, think you've, try and... I think you've got to be. When when you've had people as illustrious and so well-known as Eddie Hemmings and then Steve-O before that, obviously he's retired a couple of years ago now, but when you think about those people, they were their own individuals, their own characters. It's no good trying to replicate what they did because I think it was their unique nature of presenting and how they worked together that made Rugby League what it was a few years ago. But I think Bill Arthur in his own right is a really good commentator. I think he'll do a fantastic job and I think you just say to him, just do your own thing, do what you're good at, do your own style, and the more the more he presents and the more the more games he does, I think fans will start to appreciate his style a bit more. Greg's joined us, he's uh, wanting us to make note of the uh, Melbourne and New Zealand Warriors game that's going on, probably as we've, we've 
This is the line that we start. Yeah, we, we, we have. The, they're normally on a bit earlier, aren't they, than, than this day. They're not, we normally watch um, an NRL game so just I, before we I, come on her. I want to hold my hands up. That's that, that's my fault for misaligning. And, uh, you know, I've interrupted these two guys' pleasure of watching Australian Rugby League. Me, I've got enough on my plate with British Rugby League, <laughs> English Rugby League. Reading Drew's expansion blogs and, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. Um, New Zealand Warriors are currently winning te- uh, 12 10, so uh, it looks a good result for, for the Warriors. Kevin Marlowe's just gone over for the Warriors, uh, and that'll be an upset because Storm are, uh, are up there with, with being the favourites to win the comp this year. Just going back to um, Bill Arthur's appointment, yeah. I, I won't give him any advice because it, 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 it's not as always new to the game, is it? Yeah. It's not as always new to the the sport or to to Sky Sports yeah, broadcasting. That's not very generous of you, Drew. But um, yeah, is it, no, is it? Is it? Is it? Is prevent? Is very professional in what it does. He obviously does all the interviews after the game and stuff like that. Um, so he's he's well experienced for the role, and yeah. he knows rugby league. He'll know the players. He'll know the clubs. Um, but I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'm not. I'm not sure if he's, if I would have. Wanted him to be to be the main man. I, I, I'm a big fan of Dave Woods at the BBC, yeah. but obviously he would have had, he would have had to have. He's under probably under contract. Yeah, yeah which would have been. It would have obviously you won't be able to probably crisscross. I don't I don't know the ins, ins and outs of contracts. Well, but what about Vossy as well? Get him over. <laughs> Never mind that. Look at your own. There's a lot of good presenters on Sky. Vossy's quality though. I'll bring Sue the Boone of Ireland so I can hear him say it on commentary. What? It's brilliant. It's your favourite phrase, that isn't it? Surly Arsi Vinavalu in Australia. Oh, Absolutely. Look at the people that are already, you know, getting Dave, involved. Dave Parkinson, I, I, said, I said this to you a while ago, Dave. Get your application in. But uh, I, th- I think Bill will do a, a steady job. I don't. Uh, who's Alex saying? I, uh, Alex is saying it would have been a lot more appropriate if Sky looked to ex players to fill the commentary team like they do with football and cricket. Generally, though, they're, they're, they're more pundits, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it says Billy's unadventurous and pretty boring. I know what I, I kind of get what I, what Alex is saying, but in football and cricket, they are uh, very much pundits, aren't they? They're not anchors. They, they've got professional broadcasters. That's not what I've heard them call. They've got professional broadcasters, haven't they? And presenters yes. who, who yes. haven't played the sport to an elite level before. Could it be? Um, could it be a stopgap possibly yeah, until the end of the season with Bill Arthur? Because obviously, you look around. You've no, got the likes of Fraser Dane, and I'm he's well, someone who I really yeah, well, are very good. Well, Collins joined in on the debate, and he yeah. said that he's joined Sky. He's joined the Sky team, yeah. and he thinks that Fraser Dane will mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I think I, I've, I've really liked some of his interviews. And top quality. Yeah, yes. I'm a huge, huge advocate of Fraser Dane. I think I've heard him do a couple of games, do a few interviews, and I think he, if, if there's anyone who could take over that role and do it for a sustained period of five, ten years, didn't I think? I think Fraser Dane's is the man they could go to. Just, just going back to, to what Alex is saying about the following what they're doing in football and cricket, I would like to see it though. Um, I seen a tweet. I can't remember who it was from. I think it was just from. It was a fan tweeting that they'd like to see more ex-playing personalities on telly. Uh, in the spot, obviously we've seen the likes of Luke Gale and Paul Cook on on Sky's pundits team this season, as well as like the likes of Jordy Cunningham and Lewis Forsell. Uh, I'd like to see more ex-playing personnel, so maybe a Gary Schofield. We we all know like uh, his outlandish comments, but look, he's a fantastic personality. He's, he's brilliant for our sport. Obviously, our colleague, media colleagues over at Forty Twenty Live, he, he's on there uh, every week. He voices opinions on there, and I I, I think he's fantastic. I love to see him. Um, maybe not every week interchange it um, but I'd love to see him on Sky at some point obviously Leon Price we'll, we'll speak about him a little bit later on obviously he's, he's just lost his job as Wilkinson Town head coach I'd like to see him um, maybe cover a couple of games as well not as the main presenter but as a pundit um, Paul well, you, Cup- could, you could look at guys like Alan Kilshaw yeah. as well who, mm-hmm. I know he's done a bit of radio work uh, again yeah. very very decent lad Paul, Paul yeah. Cup was brilliant when when he was on, uh, I really thought he was very insightful. And I remember uh, Tony Ray being on, I think it was last season, yeah, maybe the Magic Weekend or... He's been on this year as well, the, as the in, Toronto game. He, he, he's, he's, he's brilliant. brilliant. He's yeah, un- yeah. Unbelievable yeah. pundit. Give that insight. Yeah, really, really in-depth. Um, but yeah, I, I, I agree with Alex, but obviously they have the, the main presenters and, mm. and the professionals. But i tell you what I like. I like Brian Carney to be a pundit rather than an anchor. Okay. Yeah. Because he voices opinions um, very, he's very well. He's trying to do both at the moment. Yeah, he is. He's, he's trying to do a bit of both and it doesn't always work like that, does it? Um, 
But I, if he was a standalone pundit, I think he'd be very, very good. Yeah, because, it, because he says some bold statements mm. and uh, it really attracts the headlines to the sport. Yeah, there are there are a lot of people, like as you said, former players, people like Brian Carney as well, who like, they, they can articulate themselves well. Alan Kilshaw, another one, as you've mentioned, I think all these people could do a, do a good job, whether, whether it was coming in for maybe one-off games, like every week you have... A different, a different ex player. So obviously, at the start of the season, we had Luke Gale. I don't, I'm not sure how many games he did. Was it just just one or two? It was one or two. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Whether whether he carried on with that and just had someone new coming in. I know I've heard Kevin Brown do some commentating and punditry before on our league, and he was. I think he did the uh, England v France test at least sports. He was very, he was very good. He was very absolutely good, fantastic. And I think if, when his playing career comes to an end, obviously, possibly still got a couple more years left in him. But then. That, that's something that you could look to do. Uh, Andrew says, Tony Ray and Paul Cook uh, point out things that I never noticed even after years of supporting the game. Uh, they open my eyes up when I listen to them and uh, uh, completely the same with me. Uh, I, I thought they were they were fantastic. Obviously, Sean Wayne uh, out of the sport. Maybe maybe get him in the studio. Hang on, hang on. You'd have to do subtitles for him. Because <laughs> you'd understand him perfectly. I'd understand him perfectly because of where I'm from, but... Would the rest of the country understand him? Hey, go can, on. he, can he enunciate? It's like when <laughs> it's like when was it um, Ellery Hanley got asked to do some punditry on one of the tours which Great Britain did, and then they took him off after a game or so because really? they couldn't really understand his Leeds accent. Ah, <laughs> right. So you can think of these I've, things. I've, I've, well. I've heard that uh, John Bateman's getting a lot of uh, stick saying hey, he may- should have subtitles over in Oz at the minute. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you could look at that bloke because. Uh, Big brother stopped now, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So there's the guy that did all the voiceovers. Oh, there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, seven minutes into the game. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> the rubber, <he> wasn't. <laughs> Uh, Alex says John Wilkin as a Sky pundit possibly uh, he speaks well. Yeah, uh, obviously like he does a lot does of the beep, he, he does a lot on the Beeb. Uh, he does the Challenge Cup games on the Beeb. He features on the BBC Five Live you know, uh, podcast quite a lot. This is a fantastic topic, and I'm really liking. Sorry. The sort of the inter- oh, no, no, I'm really yeah. liking the interaction. It's fantastic. Can I park it? And can you carry on commenting about it? Because I'd like to bring okay. it up again maybe yeah. next week. Yeah, and have another, you know, let's keep it on the agenda. Let's keep this because we want people involved in the sport, don't we? We want to put the the, the word out, don't we? And yeah. we, we like people talking big about the but, game. Yeah, but I, th- I think I think Mel Arthur's a, a steady option, especially because we're, we're midway through the season now, so you can't do anything too drastic. I think he's a. A solid option for Sky Sports. I will just say one thing before we move on, because I noticed there's a, uh, a comment from our top fan, Paul, and he said, should do a red button fan v fan option like they did with the football. Uh, <laughs> that I would remember, be worth listening to on occasion. But I, re- I remember the fan zone in, in football on Sky Sports, but I think in rugby league, if you had um, <laughs> a Wigan, v, a Wigan Saints, and Saints fan uh, on Good Friday, I think that there could be a lot of bloopers. And That'd be age restrictive, wouldn't it? <laughs> Keep it PG and all that. Uh, I want to go back to the results because I want to talk championship um, results. So, Betfair championship results from Good Friday. Barrow 26, Toronto 52. Dewsbury 8, Batley 20. Featherstone Rovers 42, York City Knights 12. Halifax 26, Bradford Bulls 33. Sheffield Eagles 44, Toulouse Olympique 16, which Drew was particularly pleased with. Yeah. Uh, I predicted it, didn't I, Dave? You got it. Hey, I told, I told you, like, I brought tipping points in last week into the you debate last week, didn't I? Did you? Uh, uh, because you, you've got. Did you say, go that far? Where's, where's well, when you when you say when you say your first choice on tipping point, you can't go back, Dave. And that, that and, and that, that they're the rules they apply last week, and it was certainly Dems the rules. Yeah. He had Dems a, Drew's rules. He had a solid week as opposed to me. who predicted two London Broncos wins over the Easter weekend, and that, I wasn't that, going to bring that up. That that did not go. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. Uh, Swinton thirty six, or Swinton Lions thirty six, or Rochdale Hornets twenty two. Witness Vikings thirty, Lee Centurions twelve. This is the one that we all got wrong, and. I've got to praise Witness. Witness played some great rugby on that day. Yeah. They got in front early doors. They were a lot more enthusiastic. They were quicker around the rook. Um, the forwards wanted it more. Uh, and basically, they, they they got a really deserved victory that day. Yeah. Did, did I put it, Lee? Yeah, yeah we all went Lee, yeah. Right. You, both, you both did, and I said, I'm going with my heart here. <laughs> <laughs> but I did sort of 
draw a bit of doubt into it. Didn't Jordan you? Johnson apparently had a, a star yeah, of the game. His, his, off, his offload for uh, who's trousers in the first half was, was absolutely fantastic, where he did the little one round his back. Yeah, he should have been stopped about 10 metres before that. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously I, I was at the game and I thought it was it was, it was a good performance by witness. Some mm. of the young players really stepped up, obviously. They couldn't keep it going when fatigue was an issue going into the second game over Easter. But they, they performed really well. Cal- uh, Callum O'Neill came in and he was, he was very good. And obviously a lot a lot of the young guys really stepped up. JJ was forced to do, I think I think he did a full full 80 minutes. And he Who's looked, JJ? John Johnston. Oh, sorry, I didn't know he was mates with him. Yeah, <laughs> but like that now. But yeah, he, uh, he, he, he did a full full game and he was very good. Right there, Drew. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of things that I could chuck in here, what we were talking about before we went on air, but I'm not going to embarrass Drew. Oh, please do. Oh, I don't know what we were speaking about before we came on air. Can't He's forgot his exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, memory. So, yeah, you, 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 so yeah, point. You, you can actually hear what Kieran Perthel said after that game yeah. on the latest podcast strange to say the yeah. final looter number finally. 15 <laughs> we finally got the number in right on the uh, <laughs> on the headlines yeah I, I knew that I was right somewhere <laughs> along the line <laughs> but yeah Lee, were, Lee, Lee were, weren't as good as I thought they'd be I thought for the, for the experience he had in that team I don't think enough, enough of their big players stepped up obviously they've got the likes of Ian Thornley Luke Douglas I don't think they did enough Liam Hood on his return I don't think he had a he had a particularly good game, but it might might just be me. But I thought he looked he, he looked a bit off the pace compared no, to when he was at witness. He looked a little bit lethargic around the rook. He didn't have that that spring in his step. He was much better on Monday. Yeah, I to add, but Where, yeah, I was just, with you for that game. Yeah, so he he was someone that someone that I was quite disappointed with. But yeah, I think it was the the reception for Liam on at witness. It, it, was, it was good. Relative, yeah, it was good. Wasn't it was it? better than the reception that uh, Jack Owens had off the uh, off the Lee fans. Yeah. He, he had a bit of he got a bit of stick every time he was doing the conversion. Yeah, it's actually because he takes ages with his goal kicking. Yeah, you know? not, he was really appreciative at Lee last season. He's yeah. one of my favourite players at Lee. Yeah, after I think Jack after Owens. after Brad Walker opened the scoring for uh, for witness, him and Jack Owens are both giving it giving it the big end to the Lee fans, which I think the ref had a word with them, but the. Uh, yeah, Jack Owens made sure that he had a memorable afternoon. French tuning in from Sunny Knots and on C. Oh, yes, yes. On all the again. Well, when you're a man of leisure, you've got to be a man of leisure. <laughs> May as well rent your house out, Fred. Back for a championship run. I'm moving on quickly from that. Uh, Batley 32, Swinton 18, Bradford Bulls 26, Barrow Raiders 14. Featherstone Rovers 14, Toronto Wolfpack 23. Close game, was it? Did you see any of it? The, I didn't get to. I know I didn't manage to see any of it, so I just wanted to just wonder. Yeah. Um, Lee 34, Jewsbury 12, back on the horse as far as Lee are concerned. They seem to be good at home, not so good away this yeah. season. That seems to be the pattern with Lee. Rochdale 16, Sheffield Eagles 52, Toulouse Olympic 56, Halifax 4. And York City Knights 17, with this Vikings 10. Any of those results surprise you? Not yeah. really, no. Part, I'd possibly say York v Witness, just because obviously Witness were riding the high of that league game. Obviously, we spoke about fatigue. I know, but they've got, they, they have got a lot of injuries, though, haven't they, Witness? They're full yeah. time, though. Yeah, yeah. well, they're still true, time, so true. they can spend a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah true. But then you, you look, you look at the team, even though they had a lot of injuries, they had a lot of good, good players, good young players as well who. They're no strangers to playing lots of games. They've played mm-hmm. 30, 40, 50 games in the team, and I think that's the thing that people forget sometimes when they see a lot of these unknown names. It's not like they're being thrown in straight away. Obviously, they've had a couple of youngsters like Jaden Hatton. I think Ben Davies made his debut in that game against York. They've, got, they've had some young players thrown in, but they do still have some good experience. They've had the likes of Hep Kale, Sam Wilde. a game on Good Friday for Hep, wasn't it? Been a really good, really good servant for Witness. He's leading by example. He had a very good game as well, and then. Obviously, whether it was a bit too much having to having to play again, just having to back up, right? yeah, which which is kind of understandable, really. Um, Betfred League One, they only had one game over the Easter period. They only played on Good Friday. Um, again, it's one of the main topics. Maybe in... Super League and Championship Championship should take a tip. Well, well Championship and... did for a couple of years. They only played one match at, at uh, Easter. Well, I was I was speaking to a couple of people after after we did last week's show talk and seeing like obviously getting a bit of feedback, seeing what they thought, and I think it was you who mentioned about having over the Easter weekend having the Super League on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then having the Championship on the Monday. 
so they spread the games out, showcase each of the competitions, and those well, again, you're airbrushing League One, which I'm going to come to because I'm always conscious that we never really give these clubs. No, I don't. I don't championship on League One on, on the Wonder. Yeah. Okay. You would, yeah. I don't think you'd, you'd give League One its own day, but that's just. I don't think. I, th- I think it's I just all think, like I just think, championship League One together, really. I just think we've got to maximise um, television audiences because they. Did, Sky dictate rugby league at the moment, and, and rugby league, oh well, Super League won't be won't be where it is without Sky. And I know, and I know. Hold, it, hold the point. Sorry. Hold the point. Sorry. Hold the point. <laughs> hold the point. Sorry, you know, yeah. I know I'm sort of hauling you back a little bit today, but it's not going to make the case today, Dave. Here we go. No, you might get your opportunity. Oh, I might, I might you might do, get might opportunity do. later. Uh, Betfred League One. Good Friday results. Coventry burst twenty eight. London scores thirty. A result that moved London scores to third in the table. Keithley continued a tremendous renaissance with a 26-18 defeat of Doncaster. They've now won four, drawn one of the six games. I just have to do the math. <laughs> um, North Wales defeated West Wales 70 points to eight. Have they blown up again, West Wales? I just, I just get the feeling that they have. Brilliant game Possibly. between Oldham and Hunslet, with Hunslet getting out on top by 36 to 28. Workington 18, Whitehaven 33. We've got a topic to discuss regarding that particular game. And without further ado, gentlemen, from the top of my head. Very exciting. So, James, do you want to pick the first topic for us? The first topic is Tom Davis at Wigan and the curse of the Wigan wing. I think we should go to you, Drew, for this one. Yeah. Oh, it's heartbreaking, isn't it, for him? Uh, if, If he was watching the game live, it probably did turn you a little bit sick when as soon as you've seen it because I, when I was watching it from the press bench and it, it was in clear view and I, I just seen his leg and it, it just went the other way his, his ankle was uh, was dangling uh, from his oh. shin it was uh, it was an horrible sight I think um, I think you just made me yeah, feel a I, bit sick again to yeah, be honest that's my it's, it's, it, it was very very ugly to to see, but it, it was just a nothing tackle as well. There was nothing wrong in the tackle. I think I think it might have been Regan Grace that just landed on him a little bit funny, and uh, yeah, he, he broke his his ankle and dislocated it. Uh, Adrian Lamb initially thought he'd only be out for three months, uh, but further scans have revealed uh, that he'll be out for the season. Won't play again until the new year. It's heartbreaking for him, really, because he'd just been named in the England Knights squad, so he'd be open to represent the Knights uh, this autumn. He'd, he'd obviously uh, he's got the number two shirt at Wigan. He had a phenomenal season last year, played in the grand final, scored in the grand final. Um, he's come a long way as well. He's come, he's, come, he's come on leaps and bounds since he's been in Wigan's first team. He only joined as a, as a trialist in the under-19s about four years ago, so he's, he has come a long way. He's still pretty raw, Um but uh, it's his work rate that stands out more than anything, and what we can will miss most about him, he, he racked up uh, the second most metres in Super League uh, last season, which is a, a very strong effort. He'll be sorely missed uh, by everyone at, at the Warriors because uh, it's uh, it's gut wrenching his injury. Uh, I wish I wish you well on Twitter after the game. Um, he, <laughs> he only got back to me about eight hours eight hours later because I think he. They've been uh, under the knife in hospital. With Don Manfredi getting injured as well over recent mm-hmm. weeks, you're going to be like really, really worried if you're on that wing of Wigan, aren't you? It's, yeah, it, it literally is the curse, isn't it, of, of the Wigan winger at the minute. D- Don Manfredi out for the seasons, it's, which is it's, it's heartbreaking for him, especially after the, the last two or three years he is had. Um, and Marshall's had a few injuries as well. Mar- he? He can't, Mar- can't forget Joe Burgess as well, can Yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Exa- exactly. Exactly. Joe Burgess was out for three months, I think it was it altogether over the off season. Uh, and then Liam Marshall picked up an injury at the start of the season, which ruled him out for six weeks. And as Tom Davis got injured on Good Friday, luckily enough, Liam Marshall was fit to return on Easter Monday. Uh, so he just filled in in Tom's. Tom Davis' spot. Um, Do you reckon they're going to be going into training and saying, play me second row, boss, I'm not <laughs> going on that wing? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a strange one at the minute, Dave. And we're going to have gone from having four very, very, very uh, impressive wingers to having two with one of them being only 70% fitting in Marshall. What other options have they got? 
who's knocking around from like the youth setup who right. might be ready to step up because they, they are, you know, one thing that you can say with regards to Adrian Lamb is that he's following in the footsteps of previous Wigan bosses yeah. in promoting players, isn't it? Well, then if there's and as well, if there's one thing you can say about Wigan, Wigan as a whole, it's the fact that the They've got no qualms in bringing youth through and giving them a chance, and it might be a case that needs must if they get a few more injuries. We've got Joe Burgess, who, as we've said, he's only been back a few weeks, and he'll he'll be wary enough as it is, but especially now after the further injuries on the wing, he'll be he'll be making sure that he, he doesn't get injured, and it's a it's a weird situation for him. But as I say, I'm sure sure there will be a few a few well, a few youngsters yeah. who'll be able to come in and well, they'll be given the chance. Craig Bowen obviously can play on the wing, can't he? He's played on the the wing and it at centre a couple of times for Wigan. Uh, they've got a young lad in the academy uh, called Jack Kennedy, uh, who could possibly make a step up. Mm. Um, but but it you probably swear towards Ollie Gildar moving to the wing, wouldn't you? Okay. Right, and okay. then someone else moving into the centres, maybe a Willie Ice moving into the centres with yeah. With all of the guild art pushing out. But well, one thing, one thing you can say about Wigan as well is they have got that strength in depth. Not nas- not necessarily all first teamers, but they have got the players who can fill in. And more, Morgan Esker has played on the wing as well, hasn't he, for, for Wigan? Right. I'm going to move us on to our next topic. Number two, uh, number two Drew. Do you want me to, it's, it's like doing an FA Cup or a Challenge Cup draw this day. <laughs> yeah, you've got the away team. <laughs> <laughs> Home is bad Easter. <laughs> right, okay. So, who in your opinion has had a bad Easter? This can be uh, bad Easter, players, uh, uh, teams. Uh, London Broncos and uh, Hull KR, if you read my good, the bad and the ugly column on, on uh, Love Rugby League. See, it's great. This, this is led straight into you being able to plug it again. Yeah, exactly, Dave. Um, yeah, oh, the, let's, let's shift that. Hull, Hull, Hull <laughs> KR more than London Broncos. Um, I'd say Hull, Hull KR would just... A dreadful Easter for, wow. for Tim Sheen's side. What's, uh, it, say, what, what's going on there? Because you, you look at it, ships, what's it, 108 points or there or thereabouts the, against Hull FC. Half time, I think it was only 18 10, and then absolutely destroyed 38 nil in that second half. And then they go and play against the Warrington side, and you, you think that playing against the Warrington team who'd just been beaten by Salford, of course. You think that maybe gives them a bit more impetus? Obviously, Warrington were looking to bounce back and they needed a reaction. And I think that was the thing that won it for Warrington. But even then, a 50, 54 6, I think it was in the end. And Warrington will be happy with that. But Hull KR again, twice over Easter, getting 50 plus points put past them. Yeah. You, the, you, you wonder where they go from here. 56 12 against Hull FC and 54 6 against Warrington. Mm. Total of 110 points conceded. Over over the Easter weekend and uh, eighteen point score. They, that well, they, they are not good stats whatsoever, I, are they? I had a chat with Adrian who was over covering the game with uh, BBC Merseyside, and yeah. he said that Hull Kingston Rovers were better than the scoreline suggested in the first half. Mm. They created lots of chances, but thanks to a combination of good defence and maybe a lack of execution, they weren't able to take the chances. Yeah, well, we spoke a few weeks ago as well about Hull KR and. One of the things we mentioned was about the missed tackles, and you wonder whether they're creeping in a little bit more because against against good quality teams like a Hull FC, like a Warrington, you can't afford to be a giving teams field position and b letting them off the hook when they when they have chances around the line. I think I think one of the tries against Warrington, they had they had four four men on one of the Warrington guys, and he just wriggled his way out of the tackle and got over the line. And at, at this level, you, you you can't afford to be to be doing that. And, you, you wonder how the, how the fans are feeling. They're probably in disbelief, really, of shipping over 100 points over Easter. They've, 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 they've got a good, a good team. Obviously, Danny Maguire was out on Monday against Warrington, but they still have the likes of Josh Drinkwater. You think that in attack, they should be able to do more than they are at the minute. And you look back to the start of the season, that forward pack that were doing very well, the likes of Mossy Masoy, the Mitch Garberts, obviously, they've got injuries in that area now, but you wonder, you wonder where it's gone wrong for them. Yeah. Uh, any mm-hmm. any individuals you think other than sort of Tom Davis and I suppose we have already got Leon Price just to give a bit of a hint we've got Leon Price as a as a topic to discuss in there as well. Yeah, well so we've already got a comment saying uh, League One work to second Leon Price. I think that should be the the bad topic. Yeah. Well, um, he, well to be yeah. fair, to be fair, he's got a topic of his own which yeah. we will discuss. Um, but anybody else up per- any, personally? Any, do you reckon? any bad players? I can't. I can't think of any. Yeah. Any any weekends for bad players off the top of my end, but yeah, uh, yeah just London and and Hull are just dreadful weekends. 
And so, London fans, put put your hands over your ears, but I, I can't see the Broncos moving off to the bottom of the table now. That's fair enough. So, let's go to our next topic. Here Come on, James. So, am I drawing the away teams? I'm drawing the away teams. So at home. At home, we've got Daryl Clark. Uh, this is a good one for yourself. This to is a very good one. Me. Okay. This is good news. This is good news. <laughs> so, news. Daryl Clark, tell us about him. What's yes, that? Signed new contract until I think it's 2023. He's been he's been a linchpin of that Warrington side this year. Aside from Blake Austin, I think he's been a standout player for them. I think he's been one of their better players. Is it's the fact that he's been playing 80 minutes week in week out, and you you think sometimes like can he sustain it? But he's showing. Obviously, he's won the Man of Steel in the past. He's He's a guy who's got those fitness levels, but he's, he seems to be having a lot more quality now. I think Steve Price said that he's, he's learning the game a lot more now and he's a lot more aware when he's playing of, of what his position entails. He's, obviously, he's never been a bad player, but this year especially we've seen him kick on a little bit and I think it's great news for Warrington. Where where that leaves Danny Walker, of course, we, we don't know yet because obviously he's been brought in in the off-season, but with Daryl Clark playing, playing 80 minutes more or less every week, you wonder where Walker fits in there whether a low moves on the cars, but yeah, it's great, great news for Warrington, I'm sure their fans will be absolutely delighted, and I think great news for Clark as well, he's really deserved his contract, and I think he's, his performances have more than merited getting this extension. Yeah, he's a fantastic player, isn't he? Eight caps for his country, he's just been named in the latest England uh, elite performance squad, you, you'd assume that he'd, he'd be in the Great Britain squad at the end of the year as well, with, alongside Josh Hodgson and uh, James Rolby. Uh, yeah. You think they'd be the three upwards for Great Britain? Would you take uh, three in your squad? As it currently stands, well, it depends what size squad he takes, doesn't it? Mm. Um, it's usually, you, you go into any it, sort of international series if you like, yeah. with like 24, 25 players. Right. Wouldn't and as well, if you took a twenty-five man squad, I'd probably take. I'd be tempted to take but, three. Well, then if you got say say for example in uh, Great Britain, sorry, had two hookers in that match day squad, which one at the minute would you say I'd miss out out of Roby? Clark Hodgson, it's, I wouldn't want to pick that to be fair. Oh, I, wouldn't, you can, but you, I will, I'll, I'll pick it right now. Hodgson would be the one to miss out for me. Really? Yes. See, I think, I think the way the way it's going, I think it'd be. I think it'd be Clark. Yeah, I think it'd be it. Clark who misses out. It'd be. It'd all depend on who has the better run into the season. James Roby, obviously, he's been absolutely sensational this yeah. year. Daryl Clark, likewise, been sensational. Josh Hodgson over in Australia. Also been absolutely fantastic. It, there's not a lot to choose between them. It it might come down to preference for for Wayne Bennix. Obviously, in the past, he's shown that he has he has faith in Josh Hodgson and the rest of the NRL bound English stars. This is another example of Warrington tying up their existing players, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And getting them on longer term deals, which we've seen examples of so far this season. Anyway, yeah. do you think this is the biggest one to date though? Getting Clark yeah, on a deal. Definitely. I think I think if. If you would have asked a Warrington fan at the start of the season, out of all the players who were maybe coming to the end of the contracts or maybe or maybe looking at improved terms, I think Clark's the one that stands out for you. With if he wasn't in that team, I, I don't think they'd be anywhere near the position in the yeah. league that they're at. Because I remember I went to Wakefield versus Warrington early in the season. Clark got taken off with Warrington in a comfortable position. Danny Walker comes on and gets absolutely bullied by Wakefield's big men, Paulie Paulie, David for feet to run in the show. To be honest, isn't it? Most, yeah, exactly. It's, it's not not criticism of Danny Walker, but you, you think Daryl Clark not only does he provide that that agile agile running, quick passing, making easy ground from round dummy half. He's quite physical as well. Isn't yeah, he? He, exactly. He, he he adds that physicality. He's not afraid to put his body on the line. I think that's something that maybe makes him stand out from a lot of other hookers, not only at Warrington but in the competition. And I think yeah, it's, it'd be nice to see how he kicks on now. Steve Price has said he's going to be a linchpin for. Five, five, ten years to come, perhaps depending how long he stays around in the game, and I can see him doing that at Warrington for a long time. Uh, interesting quotes as well from Steve Price um, okay. on the on the Donald Clark deal. Uh, in the words of in the words of um, Steve Price, as a club, we're ex- excited to to have Dad sign up for the length of the contract to have secured his caliber until twenty twenty three is a massive coup for the club, Super League, and the game in England. I think it's important we keep our top English players in Super League. I know there are a lot of other clubs on the other side of the world knocking on the door looking to cherry pick our best talent. See, I just so thought one was. I just thought it was Canberra. <laughs> so it's good to see <laughs> these English boys want to stay in Super League and keep building the competition. Uh, good Obviously, it's, it's, it's nice to see English guys staying over here, but then again, you can't you can't blame them if the heads get turned by the riches of the NRL. And the weather. And the right. weather, exactly. Right, guys, from the top of my head, next topic. Here we go, Drew. Come on. Back on the away teams. 
So to play Daryl Clark at the Clark House Hall <laughs> is Will Price. <laughs> right, oh. okay. Now, now this goes down as one of the bad, the bad stories, doesn't it? Leon Price sacked after just six games this season. It would be fair to say Workington's been a little bit inconsistent, up and down. They've lost to London Scholars. They've lost another game that they, I think they were expected to win, and they went down in the local derby. I suppose contrast that though. But this just shows how fickle the coaching business is. He was very, very good at Workington last got, year, wasn't and he? You, but you've got to bear in mind as well the fact that he's, he's up by coaching standards he's young he's inexperienced he's, he's just he's learning the trade on the job which is something that a lot of coach a lot of coaches maybe have to start off as an assistant for many years he's, he's been thrown in at the deep end at work. he applied for it though yeah, you know, yeah I'm, exactly. not, I'm not having this with players yeah. being, or coaches being chucked in at the deep end because ultimately yeah. they apply for that job but it, but it, it says, I agree with you yeah, you should go through that right it, with get your own team first of all maybe just do that do that no, but it's, it says a lot about his character though the fact that he wanted he wanted that challenge and I think in to work into the league one final last year away, away at Bradford game, game I watched and I think they were unlucky because they, they had a few injuries on that day and I think that was the thing that's maybe stopped them from getting promoted. But I think overall he's done a very good job. I don't think there'll be I don't think there'll be a fan out there regardless of who they support who who, who thinks it's the the right decision because I think a, a coach like him you maybe need to give him a bit longer. It's not been the start that they would have wanted this season, but yeah, I think he would have he would have turned it around. But as you said, it's a fickle business and if the results if, if the results aren't coming in then you, you, you pay the price with your job. Drew, you thought that this was harsh and a little bit too oh, early to make the decision. I think it's very harsh. I, don't, I, I think rugby league's coming a little bit like football in terms of um, clubs getting impatient with uh, coaches and managers. Um, six games into the season, uh, Workington Town sacking a coach. I'm not I'm not being funny, but they're, they're in League One. Do you know what I mean? They should be more patient with the coaches. Uh, because I think Leon Price depends on the budget. More than well though. turning it around. Because you know he's brought some, he's brought some big in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There this year, there's likes of Sam Hopkins there. Yeah. You've got Danny Tickle, uh, Fui Fui Mai Mai back once again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, Sean Pankovic. should more have been um, expected of the squad. Oh yeah, yeah de- definitely. The, the results have been poor, and they've been poor by Worcester's standards. They, 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 they no doubt would have been poor by Leon Price's standards, but that doesn't mean. You can't turn it around. Like, like look at Leeds Rhinos, they've not got rid of Dave Ferner just because uh, they sit near the bottom of the table, have they? I think I just think it's it's so it's just a, a rash decision. I think it's it's very impatient. They've won three, they've lost three. It's not the worst start to a season uh, in in rugby league terms. Uh, and I and I, I know it's it's not all about stuff off the field, but Leon Price, he, w- he would have been a big name for commercial uh, partners and sponsors. Uh, off the field as well, no, no disrespect to any like Cumbrian based coaches, but if they get the job now, uh, then they're not going to attract um, sponsors like Leon Price will because he's a legend of the game, he's a legend in British Rugby League, mm. former Great Britain and England international, and done, won, won it all in Super League. I will just uh, bring yeah. a, a brilliant comment here from Greg because he says great players don't always make True. great coaches. True. Well, obviously, we, you can we, go we, through you can go through rugby league history and yeah, we, we obviously we witnessed that with Kieran Cunningham at St Helens, uh, just a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, way before Canada. your time, John Woods at Lee for our yeah. older viewers. Yeah, uh, yeah, they, they don't always make good coaches, but it's important to remember Leon Price did a fantastic job with Town last season. He nearly got promoted to the championship. He was one game away yeah. from get, getting the promotion into the championship. And the the backs were were against the wall on that occasion as well because they had that whole rejig of the the playoff format and everything and and, all, and, and a couple a good few of them Workington players are boots holidays yeah. so a good few of them Workington players didn't even play in the game even though they played all year and, and worked them up to to that level uh, they didn't get to, to to play in the game so if it, I'm not saying they would have got promoted if if they didn't mm. play but they might have done. Yeah, uh, I, I just it, there's no. I think he's a good coach, and I. I Where do you think he goes his... from here, though? Because this could be, he, this might be the start and end of his coaching well, career before it's. No, I, I, I don't think we've seen the end of Leon Price in coach. I think he's a more determined character than just to to walk away from the sports after what eighteen months. Yeah. Uh, so as a head coach, I think possibly he might uh, going to be an assistant. 
And that, that, that's really benefiting to a Super League club or a Championship club. Maybe, um, why not go and assist John Keir at Bradford? Because obviously he's a Bradford lad, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, but obviously, uh, it all depends on budgets and stuff like that, doesn't it, Dave? Um, whether, whether they'll be uh, able to afford another assistant coach, something like that. But I, I certainly don't think we've seen the last of Leon Price uh, and coach. Fred's come up with a good comment. He says, nearly doesn't make the gravy, though. <laughs> <laughs> that silenced him. You know, that seems like a good point to Russell the next from one. the top of my head. We're loving the comments as well coming in, by the way. We've got a lot of comments in on, on Facebook uh, today. Just in the, in the NRL game at the moment as well, Melbourne are looking to pip it. They've just added a drop goal, the 13-12 up. Oof. We've got our next one, Good Easter. Good Easter. Okay, Good so Easter. this could be Good individual. Easter. Okay. This could be, um, you know, as, as a team. Um, can I just start with Johnny Lomax? Yeah. There's I mean, that, he's had a, an Easter that so many guys would just be so proud of. Exactly. Well, I think, especially if you, you look just at the game against Hull FC on Monday, I think it was two tries, three assists. I think he broke the line about eight times. His stats he's coming up with this year are absolutely out of this world, and I think it's testament to how good he is thinking. In more in a lot of recent weeks, I know some some people who've read my team of the week have seen that some of the names are quite similar. We've had a lot a lot of the Saints guys, the likes of Johnny Lomax, the likes of Lachlan Coot, they've been getting in the team week after week after week. But then you look at the stats that they're producing and who can who can argue against it? Lomax in the halves has been sensational. He's linked up absolutely splendidly with, with Lachlan Coot and whoever else he's partnered with at the minute, Danny Richardson, I think. He's just shown this year that he's kicking on again. It's, it's been nice to see him stay away from injuries as well, which I think has helped him having that run of games. And he's certainly one that you'd, you'd have to look at and say he's been absolutely fantastic. And another another St. Helens guy that I'd like to say has had a good Easter, Adam Swift, coming back. He's not played in our however many months and he comes back into the team. And well, that's not quite right because he, he, he did go to Leeds. Yeah, obviously, but then he's come back into St. Helens' <laughs> team and made it So he's, he's not played, he might not have played Super League, but he has played Champions Yeah, obviously, but he's been, he's been, he's been come, back, come back into the team and he's had, had a really good performance and then he looks like he can keep his place. Obviously, he's been, been playing his trade at Leeds and he's had to wait for his chance and then he's come, and come over back to Saints and he's really taken it. Yeah, uh, uh, you can't look past Saints, can you, for a good Easter? They're putting two massive performances uh, fair play to Justin Albrook because he must have some good team talks at the minute because they're, they're not putting a foot wrong, are they? Uh, another plus 50 points on on a, a decent all, all side. Brushed aside Wigan as well with ease. <laughs> they're, they're flying at the minute. and that, Can they do the treble? Can they do the double? At least, uh, you'd, you'd expect at least one piece of major silverware for Saints this year. Be, it would be a disappointment if they didn't win any major silverware this Here's year. Here's where I interrupted you as well, Drew, uh, a few minutes ago because I cut you off in your prime and you was going to be talking about Catalan. So this is that point. Yeah. Uh, Catalans, just like Saints, two out of two. The only two teams to, to win both games over Easter in Super League. The Dragons, we... Rightly so as well on the show. We've given them a lot of stick all, over the season. I think they've started very poorly. Um, I think they've been shoddy so far this season, but fair play to Steve McNamara. And, and looking back over Catalans' stats over Easter, they actually enjoy the Easter period because they always seem to do well over Easter. They always get a big crowd as well in Perpignan on the Easter Monday. Plus 10,000 uh, with a... I expected them to, to beat Castleford. I know, I know it was going to be a tough test in in, in the Tigers because they're, they're a decent side under Darrell Pell, but I, th I thought I, ex I f thoroughly expected them to win because, like I mentioned before, the two games in four days, Dave, they've got the home advantage. Catalans had to play a game on the Thursday uh, against Wakefield, which were a very tough game as well. And then obviously travel over to Perpignan. It, the, the advantage were, were fully with Catalans and, and fair play to them. They, it wasn't they really with it wasn't really with Catalans because they were away in London as well, weren't they? So they, they were, were the same they were, but thing they, with the travel and stuff. Yeah, but they do the travel all the time. They're, they're you very, say very this, but that, that's, that's one of the things that kind of makes them an interesting case to look at anyway, doesn't it? Because the amount yeah. of travel. And, and again, 
you know, you know my thoughts, dinosaur rugby league and all that, <laughs> so I won't mention it now. Um, I, can I chuck but, in here? Also, oh, so, sorry, I've just got a little comment as well uh, on the good Easter. Yeah. Uh, Sitaleke Akawola for uh, Wire, finally getting a game this year and impressing when coming off from the bench. He actually got uh, one man of steel points as well, didn't he? He, he was absolutely fantastic. I know when I, when I was um, watching watching the game back and as well, you look at his stats, come back in and... He's, he's always been a good runner of the ball, but I think he I think he broke the line about about ten, twelve times and considering he's not not played week in, week out for, for that often, I think he's he justifiably come into the team and I think he'll be hoping to, to keep his place. I think He should keep his place this week, shouldn't he? Well Steve he should do. Steve Price was obviously unhappy after the Salford game. He's made a few changes. I think the fans the fans have been wondering what Akawala has to do to get in the team as we have a little bit and then you've asked the question a couple of times exactly because obviously he's, I remember seeing him in pre-season and he, he looked like he'd, he'd lost a lot of weight he's put a lot of muscle on I think he's really playing well and then he seems to have not heard from him and then all of a sudden he gets his chance and he's, he's grabbed it with both hands and you look at him perhaps keeping some of the more experienced guys out team. I think on Monday um, I think there was no Ben Westwood and you wonder, is he going to get back in the team straight away over Akuola, or is Akuola should keep his spot? Whether or not that happens, I'll wait to be seen. I can't make my mind up whether Greg has had a good Easter or a bad Easter, because he's, 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 he's asking us for relationship advice. Oh God, he said oh he's God. met a girl from Wigan. <laughs> yeah. And she's a Wigan fan. What should he do? Bin her off. <laughs> Data. Take her on a date. <laughs> she must know her stuff. Spoken like a true Wiganer. Take, <laughs> take for a pub lunch, some pie, get some pie. <laughs> or, 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 go, or, or if you want a cheaper option, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not quite liking her too much yet to take her to a pub dinner, for a pub lunch or whatever, just go to the local chip in Babby Jed. Babby Jed, uh, P-Wet. <laughs> Bit of Babby Jed, P-Wet. Okay. Any gravy? Flotting in gravy. Can someone translate this for me? I have no clue what you're on about. Uh, Babby's Yed is a state pudding. Pudding. Why did you just say state pudding then? Because it's Babby's Yed round here. Oh, certainly round where we come yeah. from. Yeah. Not, not from... Definitely not round here. Not from... No. Sorry. The, we, the, po- we, the posh we, we place need, we need to do some, <laughs> We need to do subtitles. See, this is what I was saying before about, you know, why you can't have any Tom, Dick and Harry jumping on a commentary team. They didn't, they didn't know what a bit beetroot chairs were before, Dave. That is disgusting. <laughs> hey, did you not know? Because we're not from Wigan. Wow. See, we need we need a little translation sheet. We're going to come out of these little idiosyncratic little little statements. Right, say that again. We, we've never had such a long word on this show. <laughs> <laughs> idiosyncratic. <laughs> Did you like that? I, I like that, yeah. I'll have to keep putting some long words in. I can keep educating you. Wow. Jim's lives in a big house, you see. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. You've, not, you've not got an east wing and a west wing, have you? I <laughs> wish. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, but I'm not meaning to pick on you, James. Private road and everything. Other... Uh, <laughs> Penketh. Can I mention good, good weekend and give a, a big shout out to Batley and Sheffield in the championship? Yeah, and Sheffield killing it. Brilliant, brilliant results from both of those. Bradford's won both their games as well. Toronto's won both their games. Um, and in League One... North Wales putting that big result on um, West Wales. West Wales, good, 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 good Easter's. Well, Fred said big rumor in the Championship. Uh, Ryan Brower coming out to Toronto. Who is going to sign him? It's almost as like you've just read the off the record column uh, <laughs> there, uh, Fred. Uh, Ryan Brower, yeah, he's on his way to Toronto. He's been out. Of, he's he's not not been in uh, Brian McDermott's plans all season, has he? I know he's played a couple of games, but. Um, he's, he's not really figured in, in McDermott's plans at the Wolfpack. Does this make um, it a good Easter for Ryan? Because he could be on the possibly, possibly, Well, he could work one of, you could look at it one or two ways, couldn't you? You could look at it as always he's, he's being shipped off and uh, shipped out to the club. How many players have Toronto had as well in, in the three years mm-hmm. uh, so far? There's, there's a lot of coming and goings at the Wolfpack. Um, yeah, Toronto flew, flew out to, to Canada... Um, on Tuesday for the game uh, against Swinton Lions this weekend. You can catch that on Sky Sports. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's not, he's not full out, so obviously he's, he's, he's on the move, isn't he? Um, Lee Centurions have been linked. Bradford Bulls were interested in signing Briley, but his wages uh, are too high 
Um, you can't see. You, you can't moment. see it being short. Short offers, really, can you? I, I don't. I don't. I don't think it'll be short. But it's it's this time of year as well. We're still relatively early in the season. There's only there's only three months of the season gone by. So there's there's not as many injuries yeah. to teams at the moment than what there possibly will be in another three months mm. time as we enter the back end of the season. Easter kind um, of sorts out the week from the chat though, doesn't it? Because yeah. teams tend to be now thinking but, right. We've got so many. On yeah, the spots. But, but down, then. I think I think Lee Centurions is is the place where Ryan Brown might end up at. Um, if I'm honest, yeah. Do you, do you Obviously, think Josh Woods uh, suffered an injury for for Lee on the weekend, so yeah, good the half back, mm. the half back there won't be won't be figuring there for a while. So they need a half back, and I think Ryan Brown will, will return to the Centurions. And how many how many players have returned to Lee from Toronto? Oh, there? oh they're all welcome back. Mate. <laughs> yeah, they're all welcome back. <laughs> Um, they were always welcome. Hey, but it was all just a hey, pantomime. Dev, how, how good with that part, half back partnership though, with the championship between Martin Ridgiano and Ryan Briley? Um, very, um, very good. My thoughts is that Riddy needs to discover a little bit of form again. But yeah, um, yeah who knows? Hey, it's rekindled, I'm not complaining. If it, if it could be rekindled, 2015 form, 2016 form. Mm. From well, the top of special. my head. Can, can they gain promotion again? No, I don't, <laughs> don't get it. Don't get ahead of those. Not this season. That's next year. Um, worst thing Bradley ever did was at turning down Warrington a few years back. Oh, I would never have gotten at Warrington. Would Mr. Sure? Banks said, no, I don't, I don't think Not he would have got do, do, you think, do you think there's any other Super League clubs at the minute who could possibly need a spare half-back? Is there, you look at some of the teams maybe looking a bit light. Uh, Mark Henry says Toronto uh, Wolfpack's Facebook page has exploded. Yeah. Right? Ryan. Uh, possibly Leeds, uh, but is it... He's a runner, isn't he, Ryan Brown? I think Leeds need a bit of an organiser at the minute rather than a runner. Uh, Castleford, possibly. Mm. Obviously, he can't. Hang on, hang on. He's took Corey Aston two years. Well, yeah, uh, sorry, time. sorry, Corey. Don't go I know, I know, I know. I know. Two yeah, years. he enjoyed a stellar debut then. Yeah. Uh, but it could be an option. He, he came through the academy at Castleford uh, as well, didn't he? Who, Corey? Uh, Ryan. No, Ryan Brown. Ryan, he did go to Castleford, first of all, yeah. but um, from West Harton. Yeah, um, so it's going to be interesting to, to see where he lands. I'm predicting uh, Lee Centurions yeah. at the minute. Um, the top of my head. Whose turn is it? It's, it's me, I'm the away team. Who did you have? Was it? Uh, good Easter. It was a good Easter, wasn't it? Good huh? Easter will take on. There we go. I think I've got a few of them in my hand. Hey, you've only got one. <laughs> and we've got Hunslet and League One. Hmm. Now, again... I wanted us to talk a little bit more about League One. So I really I should chuck it over to you guys see how much research you've done. <laughs> Take it away, Drew. That was an evil laugh from David. Yeah, um, um, yeah. yeah all, all them forward, Danny Bridge, uh, set to return. <laughs> Finally, after his nine-month uh, suspension, uh, it was a, I think it was a grade F assault charge on uh, referee Cameron Worsley in a defeat to Keithley. Last year, uh, I think he just he kind of just like grabbed him down. With it. I think it was in frustration. Um, but yeah, so it, <laughs> the Island International will be returning after. It's good a, that he's coming time. back into it. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah, he's a good player, actually. and he's he's been very apologetic as well. Uh, he, he, that video was terrible, though. To yeah, the, the video was terrible, but he's been he has been very apologetic uh, quite a number of times on social media and. Um, online and stuff like that. Well, so it's, it's one of the things that we're good at as a sport. We can't. We're, we're good at giving people second chances. Like if, they, if they've done something wrong, then we're not. We're not the kind of sport that'll just throw them to the curb and leave them to fend for themselves. You've had players in the past. You look at people like Ben Flower, who's done wrong, served his suspension, he's come back and he's been been welcomed back into the sport. I think that's one thing that we're good at. I'm going to chuck Rob Massam in here because I know I've mentioned North Wales a couple of times. He's got four tries. Oh. I mean, you've got to be going so I've got four <laughs> tries in a game in, in, in Furness. Um, and yeah, I wanted to come to, to Homeslot because again, they've been proving to be, you know, them and Whitehaven, the most consistent sides at that level so yeah. far this season. Do you think, this one throwing it to you, do you think they could be the two at the end of the season who you look at and think they're, they're the front runners or do you think there'll be any dark horses coming Well, certainly, the certainly they've got that bit of a gap over the likes of uh, Newcastle and Oldham. Who well, then I would have expected to be. Yeah. Up there. Well, then obviously Newcastle with the with the the dream team of of Finnegan and Betts now. 
You wonder, wonder whether have you, have you said that tongue in cheek? You've just started checking there. No, they're both very, very, very astute coaches at, at that level as well. They'll, they'll do a sterling job, and I think you can't write them off. They didn't spend that much time in the playing days at that level. I think you've got to know these divisions, and you've got to know. This yeah. is why sometimes, I suppose, in a, in a way, we're back on the Leon Price thing. He's always played at the elite level, hasn't he? Yeah, He's yeah. Not, never been at that level. So lads like, or I should say, let's call him a lad, he won't appreciate that. Gary Thornton, the coach <laughs> over at Hunslet, has been around that division. He's coached over at Batley. He's, he's done youth structures at, at Castleford. Yeah. So he's, he's, his knowledge of the sport is far more rounded but then it than, is. say, a Finnegan who's played internationally and I've played most of the time. In yeah, but the, 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 at the end of the at the end of the day, though, Bets never walked through a championship ground before he got the witness job. Yeah, at the end of the day, though, you've got to think a, a good coach is a good coach. And although you, you look at coaches at that that level and think, right, they've got the they've got the know how and the experience of how it works at that level. If, if they're a good coach and they can instill their methods quickly onto the team, which I'm sure Simon Finnegan, Ben Spets are probably trying to do now at Newcastle. If they could, they can get them clicking into gear quickly. Then I think I think they can start stringing a few wins together. I don't think just because a coach hasn't hasn't played at that level, they're necessarily not going to succeed. Because I think at the end of the day, if they if they can work well with the players, then I think they've they've got a good chance of having success. But what I'm going at is that if you're if you've always been in elite systems and you've always been sort of like coached by the best, you're going to expect those same standards of guys yeah. who. Oh yeah, of course. Maybe but, can't reach that level. Of course, but it'll be it'll be a bit of a learning curve for the coaches as well, won't it? If if they've been used to a different different environment mm-hmm. and they've been been thrown into maybe surreal surroundings, and it'll be the sign of a good coach how how quickly they can they can, they can adapt to it, and then even adapt their methods. Maybe if they're expecting too much of some of the players at that level, I think it might be a bit of a learning curve for them. But I think give it give it a couple of months, and then if we re- revisit, see how see how they're doing at Newcastle, I think they could be one who we'll talk about a bit more. I mean, yeah, yeah, you know, you know potentially. I mean, the, the gap is only four points, but I mean, I, I would fancy both them. And I'm conscious we, we've never really mentioned Whitehaven, who's put together very much um, a locally flavoured yeah. team. They've got Gary Charlton there, who, well, he was a, a professional for many many years. Played at, well, I think he played at all of the Cumbrian clubs actually. Um, he's coached amateur wise up there. He's done. You know, representative rugby and stuff. So, in a lot of ways, he's the perfect fit for Whitehaven at this moment in time, isn't it? And we've 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 analysed the flip side of Price getting the boot over at Workington. Yeah. Here's where the successful bit comes in for Whitehaven. Yeah, it does. Possible, possible. It's an all again. <laughs> well, it's we still we still we still we we yet to to fully see what Whitehaven are capable of, aren't we? Uh, there's still a long way to go. Um, I, it, it was still six games into the season. Oh. Honestly, we were working to the white and finish at the end of the season. We we were no clearer yet yeah. than what we were when we was making our predictions at the start. Keep watching, and we'll keep talking about it. Yeah, right. We will. Back onto the home teams. Let's see who we get. Let's go towards the bottom, and we've got. Fred's got to go. Bye, Fred. Yeah, it's Fred. Bye, bye, Fred. Go and have um, a posh meal, like wherever you are. Okay. We've got Women's Rugby League. Women's Rugby League. Glad we've come to this one. I can chuck something in. I heard your voice the, when I was uh, scrolling through my phone the other day on the O League app. Oh, I didn't ring you by mistake. <laughs> no. Oh, it was not. I, I did. I, I stepped up onto the O League app for oh. this coming weekend. Wait, though, Greg just said Paul Creary is an example of a coach that's not played for a top team but is well respected in the sport. Brilliant example there, Greg. Yeah. Brilliant example. And that's coach just what we're looking at. In case anyone doesn't, uh, doesn't know. Yeah. yeah. Solid coach, solid coach. But anyway, on to Women's rugby, rugby League. Yeah, Women's Rugby League. I've had a weekend of it, really, to be honest. Because uh, over on Sunday, I was over at Featherstone Rovers for the Women's Rugby League Association plate final and the cup final. So this is, if you like, the, the winter game. So it's the end of the winter season. And in the plate competition, East Leeds got defeated by Keithley Albion, 52 points to 14. Now I have to admit, when the both sides came out warming up, East Leeds had 17 players, Keithley Albion only had 13. Wow, yeah. Uh, so I looked at the two and thought, well, this could be a bit of a tough ass for Keithley if they get a couple of knocks, but it proved that the Keithley Albion team seemed to be better suited to the conditions. It was quite a warm day. Mm. 
um, they got three or four really athletic players who dominated um, and they got away they scored 26 points in the chart so well played to Keithley Albion in winning the plate in that one the cup final saw Featherstone Lionesses take on Oral St James and a bit of a story about Oral St James in that they only really started this past season mm. so they've done really well in the very first season to A have a solid season in the league where the, they've been put in which I think is the second division. Mm -hmm. um, but to work the way through to a cup final, sadly it wasn't to be on the day. Featherstone Lionesses had that little bit more, a little bit more finesse. Yeah. Um, this had to be one of the longest games that I've ever been involved in because there was a lot of injuries. It was really hard, re really hard tackling. And as a result, Oral St. James, fortunately this was 17 against 17, but by the end of it, you got Featherstone who could only use two of the substitutes. Mm -hmm. And Oral St. James couldn't, use any of them because of the amount of injuries that were being picked up so um, you know it was it really was one of those sounds a bit of a bruising encounter bruising encounter but fair it, yeah. was, it was fair there was no I mean that's that's the joy of women's rugby league you don't get this testosterone and <laughs> you know the biff sort of coming in the same way you didn't do in the men's game um, but yeah I, got, I took a, a phone call asking me would I be available to cover um, the women's super league game on the Monday over at St Helens and I uh, Fortunately, I was. So, uh, across I went. It was St. Helens taking on Bradford Bulls. Got some great players, St. Helens, by the way. We were chatting just a little mm. bit before we started the show, weren't we? So, the likes of Jodie Cunningham's come back. She's only played, she only played two games last year due to injury. Uh, but she's come back. She's playing fullback for St. Helens. Very well respected international player. One of the most skillful ladies players that I think I've seen. She just glides across the pitch. She can. Big defenders, she's quite strong as well. She's played for, for a lot of years, a number of years, hasn't she? Mm, she um, has, yeah, she's, I think she's, she plays for Tato. Yeah, she? She, she's one of the most experienced um, English women players uh, in the game. Obviously, played for England at the 2017 World Cup. And have you, have you seen a story on that as well? It's a remarkable story. She, she, she picks up um, a season ended injury in 2017, only a couple of months before the World Cup. Right. And the, and the amount of rehab that she had to do for it because obviously, obviously the, um, the women's game isn't paid so obviously they've got normal jobs and, and what not so she was getting up to go to the gym at the crack of dawn and then she was she went and did a full day's work and then she went training at night and that was every single day and, and she did it every single day just so she could make the England team to, to go over to Australia for the, for the World Cup and, and but it was a gruesome regime that she, she put herself uh, through for a couple of months just so she can play for a country at the World Cup, it's, it's fantastic. I've got to give a few other mentions as well, because although St. Helens won 24-0 in that game against Bradford Bulls, the Bulls were never that far away. They got a winger called Savannah Andrade, who was very, very good. She runs bolt upright, which yeah. makes it really difficult to stop. And, and uh, they've also got a centre called Amy Hardcastle, who's also yeah. represented England and uh, been really good on, on that level as well. Um, and a tricky halfback as well, Danielle Bowes, who I was alongside Lewis Farsell, and Lewis was once a teammate uh, there, now of Leeds Rhinos, of course. Uh, but she said, look out for Danielle, because she always gets at least one intercept every single game. And she did. She intercepted, went half the length of the field, and funnily enough, it was Jodie Cunningham that tackled her. Um, other players to, to mention from a St. Helens point of view, Faye Gaskin. Uh, she's again, quality, isn't she? Very experienced player. Yeah. I know she's been down at Lee East when Lee East had a, a ladies team a, a few years ago. Um, she's from Widnes originally. Um, she's brilliant. She's she's great, great, yeah, she's a great kicker. Yeah. Uh, on the field and over, over the sticks as yeah, well. Yeah, she, I mean, she, she kicked four from four in that, but yeah. just some of the range of kicks that she was coming up with. She's, just, she's just in general as well, the way she, she, she guides the team around the park perfectly. And, uh, and she's an Eng England international and rightly so. Her and Zoe Harris, who I believe is quite new to rugby league, they formed really well at, at, um, uh, at halfback. Um, you got to look at the likes of Tara Jones as well. He not only is an up and coming match official, but he's one of the most promising women's yeah. players in the country. Good hooker. Uh, nice. And you mentioned as well Vicky Whitfield, who scored two yeah. tries in this game. Now, I mean, Vicky, you can't stop her once she's she gets powerful. Her. Yeah, 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 once she gets out of the team. Um, so I was again it was something I was, I was really really impressed with the standard. Emily Rudge as well. So so we just keep mentioning yeah, the players, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they, they just keep coming in my mind as as we we're, we're talking about it. Emily, yeah, Emily Rudge has got a lot of a lot of strike and a lot of uh, firepower uh, in the back row or all centres. 
The Bulls had um, a girl as well called Grace Ramsden, who's a new name to them this season. Apparently she's been playing previously at Stanningley. She looks a, a really promising uh, number nine, cool. sort of coming through the ranks. So yeah, 24 nil sounds like a right battering, but it wasn't. It was quite a close game, really. Mm. St. Helens scored two tries in the first five minutes. Then scored well, it's one. Only four, only, four, only four tries, isn't it? There's yeah, four, he scored four, one right at the start of the second half, and then one right at the end of the game. But so. Sertz's defence must have been very good. I, I watched about twenty minutes of it, Dave, uh, of your commentary. Um, but then I had to shoot off out, um, so I can't unfortunately watch the rest of the game. Yeah, um, it, was, it was good. I was. But well, to, massive credit to the RFL as well uh, and the Ever League gap. The 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 killing it this season with the Ever League gap. It's, it's fantastic. They've got a women's game on there all the time. They've got uh, community games on there all the time. They've got academy origin games on there. Uh, it's, it's been really, really impressive. Obviously, they've got Championship and League One action as well. Uh, I've really enjoyed the Ever League coverage this season. Uh, fair play to the commentators as well, yourself included, Dave. Uh, it's been great to, to watch. It well, really has. It's a good thing to mention as well, because this coming weekend on the Ever League app, uh, starting at 1pm, uh, Castleford Tigers take on Leeds Rhinos from... It's actually from the Menderhose Jungle. Mm. So I'm looking forward to getting across there. I know the gantry will be dusty and whatever, but I'll be a bit. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Um, and then after that at 3pm, Sheffield Eagles against Halifax in the Betford Championship. That's on. And then if you want to just flick over your television then, you've got Sky Sports Toronto and Swinton. There you go. So that, that's your Saturday. That's, well, that's your Sunday sorted, isn't it? It's, well, uh, I'm at St. Helens on Sunday, Dave. Um, in fact, if you stay it for over rugby league.com. If you stay on at St. Helens after the main game, it's the women's game. Is it really? Yes. The Straight after. after. Yeah. Oh well, I'll I'll, I'll um, go go downstairs into the press room. Do do me uh, interviews with um, Justin Albrook and Steve McNamara. And then go go back up to the uh, press box and watch the women's game while they be work. One last thing before I move on from that topic, uh, it was the draw for the Coral Challenge Cup as well at the weekend. Round one, I think yep, it was. Yeah, the women's challenge cup. Witness Vikings take on Ulton Raidettes. Keithley Albion take on Hull FC. Featherstone Lionesses at home to Stanningley, which looks like the pick of these fixtures, by the way. Halifax at home to Hull Kingston Rovers. Huddersfield Giants have got to travel over to the British Army. There's two services teams that are in this this comp. Um, Warrington Wolves at home to Wigan St. Pat's. So you've got a Warrington Wig, Wigan Derby going on there. The Royal Air Force, they'll host Lee Myers Rangers. And Rochdale Hornets will host Barrow. And obviously, Ben Bett, obviously, his wife, um, Roxy Moura, has made the move across from St. Helens to Warrington uh, this season. And, and uh, she'll be playing for, for the Wolves in the Championship. I think she's captain in them. Yeah, she, she is. is. She's skipper. Uh, she she was very good for St. Helens as well last season. She she she, she is kind of like Ben Murdoch Masilla. He's a strong running back rower. Uh, he's, he's very, very powerful in attack and defence as well. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how, how Warrington do because obviously Ben Westwood's involved in the, in the coaching yeah. uh, of the women's side. We've not got too many topics remaining. Not too many. Is it me? Back on to you. It's me, the away side. Facing Women's Rugby League is standalone games. Oh, that we could be speaking about this for the next half an hour, couldn't we? Um, yeah, but, but we're, we're, all, not, we're not but, going but, to. But we're not going to because we're already over an hour. Um, standalone games. Well, for the for the Easter weekend especially, I think um, it, we've got to have standalone games. I know the editor is not here to, uh, today, but James Gordon did a column on this on LoveRugbyLeague.com. Uh, earlier this week, I do agree with him on this point. I don't think there's many times that me and James agree on stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll say my format and I'll let you two then just uh, say if you disagree or agree with me. Uh, I, I'd have um, these, so I'd have the double header over the Easter weekend scrapped and just have one one game in Super League Championship and uh, well one round in Super League Championship and uh, League One uh, on the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'd spread. Super League out, so I'd have the whole derby and the Wigan Saints derby um, on the f Good Friday. I'd have the whole derby kicking off at dinner time, and I'd have the Wigan Saints derby kicking off around about five o'clock, something like that. Uh, on the Saturday, I'd have Huddersfield v Leeds and London versus 
Catalan. So I'd have London versus Catalan, dinner time kick off, I'd have Huddersfield Leeds, uh, five o'clock kick off. This, this is just uh, for example. And then I'd have uh, on, the, on the Sunday, um, who are the other teams? Castleford Wakefield <laughs> on the Sunday, and Salford versus Warrington on the Sunday. I'd have Salford Warrington at the dinner time on the Sunday. And then uh, Cass Wakey on the Sunday night, and I'd have all six fixtures um, on Sky Sports, if, preferably. Um, unless you could, you could if, if not, you could look into online streaming. But the main thing is that they will be televised or they will be streamed. You will be able to watch them every. So you, if you wanted to, you could have a lazy weekend, not move from the couch, and uh, watch all six Super League games. And then on the Monday, I'd have. Uh, all the Championship and League One fixtures, and then I know uh, I've let the RFL and Super League um, do a lot of promotion uh, and offers, so people with Super League season tickets could uh, go and watch a Championship or League One game. And I'd also have the, uh, a Championship, uh, two Championship games, or one Championship game and one League One game on the Ever League app, uh, so people could watch them. Uh, I definitely, um, if I was on the on the board and the commercial staff at League One Championship clubs, put offers on uh, for Super League clubs to attend. So hopefully they get a good gate receipt as well on the Monday, and it stops part time players uh, ridiculously playing two games in four days. You have come up with some really good points there. I can tell you put a lot of thought into that. <laughs> <laughs> well. I am. I am. Just, I am, I am, just I am, blast it through. Why can't you blast through any of your other points? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. I'm that sorry. Was a bit of amazing thought process going into that. So I agree with everything that you've said. However, I would swap it round ever so slightly. Okay. To have all your championship on Good Friday. Why is that? Because the part-time players and it gives them better recovery because they're back in work right, on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With with full-time players, they, you can yeah. have that recovery. You can spend that extra time on recovery anyway, yeah. can't you? So yeah, yeah, well, well, well yeah. So it's, that, that would be the, the only thing. Yeah, that would be the only yeah. thing. Now, I know I've said elsewhere. I am a big fan of this time of year. I, I love this time of year. It's wall-to-wall -wall rugby league, and it's I, great for the fans, like we said last week. But it's just bad for the players. And one thing that I am crucial of, and and. There's, there's probably two things that I'd address it. I think if you was gonna if you was gonna tech and have the two the two games, the two rounds over the Easter period, mm. you would have to change a couple of the rules of rugby league, I feel, to make it less impactful. So what I'm meaning I'd just scrap scrap Magic Weekend and Summer Bash and so you'd have that that Easter Monday fixture now where the Magic Weekend is in the Summer Bashes. And you could spread that out as well, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, over yeah, over, over the May so and August bank holidays because obviously the Challenge Cup from next year onwards is moving to uh, yeah. May. So I can tell you, you know, you've put like loads and loads of thoughts in, in into that. Um, so yeah, so that the only thing that rankles with me is that we've, we've booted every other tradition that we have in rugby league out the window, and that just I don't know. It's the one thing that rankles with me. As a newfound rugby league dinosaur. Yeah. No, I, 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 I do understand what you're saying, Dave. And don't get me wrong, I, as a journal, you go into two or three games on an Easter weekend, it's brilliant because you just want to watch rugby league all the time. And it's fantastic. It's great to see a Wigan Saints derby or a Hull derby on the, on the Good Friday. Then the, you, you, you watch another game on the Monday and then you, you're off to another game on the, on the following Saturday or something like that. It's great. But uh, you've got you've got to take the players into into consideration in my perspective because yeah. they're put they're putting through their bodies through absolute torture for just for, for, for especially for part time players for a couple of hundred quid the play the, their bodies will suffer for an extra two weeks now because the the recovery won't be as good as like what a super league side to get so they'll be going into work absolutely creased yeah but then even even the full time players you, you look yeah. at some of them and some of them have been. Like voicing their discontent, I think Joel Tompkins was one who said he'd like to see the the double header mm. scrapped, which which you can understand. Players are unhappy; they don't have to put the bodies on the line for two games in quick succession. I think, especially the forwards. Imagine the forwards on they the forward they must be that Monday. Exactly. Like Tuesday. They must be absolutely shattered. But then I, I'm along the same thing as you. I, I do I do think that it would work where you had Super League 
at the start of the weekend, but I, I personally like to see if if it's a because obviously you've got the Good Friday and then Saturday. But like I personally have three games on each day, so rather than just having the two on each, I'd like to see maybe a twelve fifteen, a three o'clock, or or half three, and then a six o'clock. And then is that you, purely just for your TV audience? So yeah, are we thinking? Or are we thinking that some people might actually want to get to more of the yeah, exactly. games? I think, yeah, well, I think I think you've got to take into account that the, there won't be that many. Personally, I don't think there's that many people who yeah. go to two games on one day. Perhaps right. I think I think it'd be better in terms of trying to grow the appeal and showcase the sport. If is if we're getting rid of a magic weekend or something like that, you have three games one day, three days, uh, three games on another. But then, then, but then you've just got another day where you'll have nothing on top of But it? then if we're that if we're that keen on showcasing, as you said, League One, could he can have the League One on the Sunday as they normally are? But again, but realistically, but realistically, you'd want those earlier on for get the more. Yeah the more time back. Possibly, this is like everybody moans about Super League. They're doing this as a job. This is the job where yeah. everybody else is doing this as a part-time job. Yeah. So surely, that, I'm just thinking again, if we're all about player welfare, I'm sure that's going to take place earlier rather yeah. than later. Then that's the only thing. I, yeah, I don't disagree in Yeah, but then we say, we say about League One, you're, you're, say, you're saying about them maybe needing that extra recovery time, but they're, they're used to playing on a Sunday. It's not a case of saying, well, I'm gone, I'm gone. You can't tap that. Cool. Yeah, you can. Like, Super thing. League should be used to playing on Sunday. Yeah, obviously they are, but if you think about League One, it's it, you're giving them the recovery time that they normally get if you play them on a Sunday. You, you can play them early if you want, but if you play the League One games on the Sunday, they're getting the same recovery time as they get normal weeks. Because normally League One is Sunday, and then they play again yeah. on the Sunday. So they're still getting that seven days break. It's not a case of saying, oh, let's just give them an extra two, get two days break for the sake of it. Because I think if you're trying to showcase the sport, especially early on, on the Good Friday and Saturday, the start of the Easter weekend, you want you want the teams, like the best teams, the best players showcase first, in my opinion, which is why I think you'd need the Super League players on first, Sunday at the League One, and then Championship on the Monday. If, if you have separate days for the competitions, I think it would work well. But I do I do think that if, you, if, if you're running with a system where you showcase each different league, I do think Super League would have to go first. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with James. Though. Even if even if, you, even if you play the uh, the League One and the Championship on the Monday, um, this is still only going to be playing on the Sunday, which, so it's only one day less recovery time. But I I understand what you're saying. But all these ideas that we've just thrown into into the heart, so to speak, they're all better than what it is now currently for the players. And I suppose yeah. you could look at that. And, and, and not and just not just at this time of year either, couldn't you? You know, because we're in, Certainly, so, and, and, with the thing about the standalone games, anyway. Yeah. And if we scrap the Magic Weekend and the Summer Bash um, and play that the current Easter Monday fixture, for example, on them respective weekends, you still get like that Magic Weekend TV and, and that Summer Bash TV audience on Sky Sports if you're spreading it spreading it out two games each over three days. Mm -hmm. You'll still get that TV audience, so you're not it's, really. It's, you're it's not interesting. Losing anything. Well, it's interesting as well for for the. Super League in terms of as a commercial enterprise because you look at the Magic Weekend that's one of the big things for them and how they get a lot of exposure on TV as we see all the games they broadcast live on Sky Sports you've got thousands I think it's what 70 odd thousand normally over the weekend flopping into the stadium it's a, it's a big thing for them and I don't I think I think Super League as, as, a, as a body are probably a bit reluctant to get rid of the Magic Weekend purely because it's it's kind of it's kind of become part of the, of the calendar now the fact that Fans, fans obviously like the weekend because they like they like going there, enjoying enjoying themselves. It's the, yeah, exactly. That's essentially what it is. They like having the, the weekend out to have a few drinks, watch it, watch a lot of rugby. Which you understand, it's it's good for the fans. Super League, Super League won't want to get rid of that. So it's interesting to see what they do. But I don't I don't think they'd be that keen on scrapping that idea. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But I, I just don't. I don't... I just don't see what Magic Weekend really brings anymore, to be honest. Um, well, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, I'm kind of with you on that. And, so, and Summer Bash, is it? Is it are the, how many I'd, get rid, I'd get rid of the Summer Bash. 100%. How many people from Blackpool actually go to the go, go to the yeah. Summer Bash who aren't fans of respect it? How many people from Newcastle went to the Magic Weekend last year nobody's who aren't, aren't rugby league fans? Nobody's ever told us this information, have they? Yeah, so, the thing, we, so we don't know. We don't know what... what it, the, old, the only majority of voices you heard in the, in uh, St Jimmy's Park last year were, were the voices of the stewards telling you which one you had to sat on. But, serious, like, 
Apart from, you probably got like a few teams from Cromlington Rockets or something like that who do who, who do a great job by the way uh, promoting the game in the North East. But I just don't really see. It's just every. You, you, it's that case of preaching to the converted audience with the, the yeah. Magic Weekend yeah. Summer Bash for me. Um, We've kind of yeah. combined. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, Sorry. I'm re- no, yeah. I'm really glad that that, that conversation's Absolutely. gone in the way that it's gone because that's combined Easter debate because we've debated that and also having standalone yeah. games. You know, yeah. so it's, it's kind of like they've merged into one there. Uh, and finally, the one thing that I just want to maybe chuck out there, you've seen this guy play an awful lot through, Joe Wardle at Hull Kingston Rovers has yeah. called it a day at 21. Yeah, I have. I've, I've seen him play quite a few times. I've, I've seen him um, when he was like 16, 17, 18 year old, before he even burst into the OKR first team. He was a quality uh, young player. It, it was it was never anything that, like spectacular, but he always did the hard work. Um, and it's just a, a such a, a sad shame to see him retire. Dave, uh, three uh, operations on his hip in the last two years, uh, and as a twenty-one year old, uh, that that must be quite worrying, really. Yeah, and, I, part, uh, you, you, and as a, uh, his mum and dad, or his, his parents, are, uh, and the rest of his family. Uh, must be quite frightened by that, eh? Um, because it, three operations in two years when you're so young, uh, only 17 appearances he made for the first team, uh, not an established player yet, and he's already had three operations. It's it is quite worrying. It's quite saddening, really. But at least he got to to actually achieve his dream in playing for his hometown club in Hulkington and Rovers. Well, I once saw a stat, you know, that said that one in eight players that I know I'm mentioning another club here, but one in eight players that have played for Leeds only made one appearance. So the fact that he's gonna made 17 appearances well, for Hull Kingston Rovers, I bet there's a good percentage of players that haven't actually reached yeah. 17 appearances. Yeah. So, you know, fair play to you, all the best for the future. Yeah. Uh, it, and let's credit uh, Hull KR on this. They've, oh, man, they've yeah. kept him um, involved in the club yeah, as well. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's gone on to be uh, the assistant coach for the Hull KR uh, women's team, yeah, which is great stuff. And he's, uh, he's obviously, um, Going to be helping the under 16s team as well with coaching, so it's it's good to see that clubs are looking after the players as well. Definitely. Um, we've just about run out of time because I'm conscious that it was going to be it was always going to be a long one this with two sort of rounds to discuss. The, and we're, we're as long as a, a King Kong film, you know. Uh, but you know, so we're going to head off. Um, we'll look at all the games that have been taking place this weekend. I'm not even going to do predictions because that usually adds another 10 minutes, doesn't it? So uh, we'll predict amongst ourselves, uh, but leave you to it. Thank you very much for all your comments. Thank you for everything. Uh, Do remember you can like, share, comment, and get this watched if you like later on on YouTube.